Hi, I'm Frank Roard with John Debney here. We're going to talk to you about the fall flight. We're going to make our predictions about what we've been seeing with fall flight. And I'm afraid to say it's pretty bad news. Um, the prairies are uniformly dry this year. And so we're going to see a reduced breeding effort. We have seen a reduced breeding effort. And so it's not going to be a great fall flight. Probably one of the poorer ones we've seen in 20 years or so. Probably. But time out. You know, we still have remarkably high duck numbers. So, unfortunately, we didn't do the big May surveys. It's the coordinated Fish and Wildlife Service, Canadian Wildlife Service, some state guys helping to count ducks in the whole prairies. But we did get lucky because North Dakota, in particular, did a state survey, and several other states did, Oregon and, and Wisconsin. And the numbers in North Dakota for ducks are not bad. In fact, they're still well above the long-term average. But we all know that we, we hunt the fall flight, not the breeding population. Right. And, you know, the interesting thing about it is I think the most remarkable thing that we saw, Frank, from the numbers we got from the game and fish was a big year-over-year -year change in water. Right. I mean, that was re it, re really remarkable. It was Single remarkable. biggest drop in Absolutely. history. Yeah. So we went into 2020 with all that carryover water, crazy wet. Yeah. We felt pretty good about, yeah. at least out of the U.S. prairies, what we were going to see for production last year. Right. Um, but we were dry last summer, and we were dry last fall, and we were dry this spring, and it really came to, it came to show this spring in yeah. terms of the drought. Yeah. Yeah, let me, let me echo. John said greatest change. They've been doing the state survey in North Dakota for 74 years. Something like Biggest that. percentage change from last year to this year. Like, like John said, last year, North Dakota was super wet. and we did, we did great on duck production, as did South Dakota. This year, bone dry. I mean, right. just, just like ridiculous. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, I think yeah. it's, it's hard for hunters in lots yeah. of parts of the world to imagine how you go from crazy wet to crazy yeah. dry, but that's how this place works, right? right? And, right. But so with those dry conditions early and then those dry conditions throughout, you know, we probably didn't get ducks settling in the best habitat on the prairies. Right. We know we had reduced Renesting effort for right. sure, right. and we know we had poorer duckling survival. Duckling survival is always <clears throat> lower in dry years. Always. So all yeah. those things in aggregate yeah. tell us we're not going to have a big fall flight duck. That's right. So when we say we're not going to have a big fall flight, we have a pretty good carryover breeding populations. And one of the interesting things about drought is females survive better in dry years on the prairies because they don't nest very much. Right. They don't die on the nests. So we'll have a considerable flight of adult ducks. Right. It's the juvenile ducks that we don't have, and that's really what makes great duck seasons. Like you know, and it's yeah. and we've talked about this around the office the last couple of years. If you talk to serious snow goose hunters, they'll scan yeah. a flock of snow geese and say, boy, there's a lot of juvies or there's yeah. not a lot of juvies. Yeah. With ducks, it's not as easy to do that, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. And so you see a flock of mallards come over. Yeah. You can't pick out the little gray ones like yeah. we do with snow goose hunting. Yeah. And so I think it's harder for hunters to intuitively see it in the right. field. Right. But you're right. I mean, we just, with with the not settling in the best places, low re-nesting effort, poor duckling survival, we just, we can't have the big we'll super the crop of juveniles. Yeah. yeah. And there, there are some differences in ducks. So for some ducks, you're not going to see any big change. So green wing teal, for instance, they're not dependent on the, on the prairies, which right. are dry. And so we normally don't have green wing teal nesting in any numbers here in the Dakotas. And so green wings going to be fine. Gadwaller mystery duck, you know, we had in North Dakota, the count is still twice as high as normal, you know, as the long-term average. Now, we don't think they had good breeding success, but we still have a lot of gadwall. Well, and gadwall yeah. are one of those crazy ducks, yeah. right? In the yeah. late 80s and early yeah. 90s, the last time we had real drought, yeah. gadwall populations increased. Increased, yeah. So, like, yeah. yeah, I mean, they're crazy But ducks. other ducks, pintails, pintails probably took it worse than any other duck because they really like those shallow ephemeral ponds. And there were none of those, absolutely none at the start of the season. So the pintails overflew the prairies, went to the Arctic where they don't do very well. Uh, ringnecks, for instance, that, that's a boreal nesting duck. They're going to be fine. Scop are going to you know, probably be about as fine as they've been for a while. Um, Camasbacks probably did poorly because they depend on those parkland ponds. Um, so it's a, it's a real mix. 
Well, and mallards, right? I mean, the big, you look at why we've had high mallard populations the last number of years. We've had high mallard populations based on the great strategy mallards have and high, being great re-nesters, yep. right? And, and having a pretty good run of wet may, wet may ponds and wet July ponds has allowed those mallards to really, really re-nest. Yeah. And this year, yeah. probably pretty limited. That didn't happen. I, I think yeah. mallards were largely one nest, and then if it failed due to predation, they quit. Right. Females just said, I'm waiting until next year. So, yeah. Now, it's variable. The Atlantic Flyway had better conditions. Uh, things in the east were better, so they'll do relatively well this year compared to, to other flyways. In the Pacific, wow. I mean, dry. it is dry everywhere out there. Um, and for a state like California that depends on mostly local mallards, I don't think they're producing mallards this year at all. So what what gets to California will come out of Alaska or, or western Alberta, the Boreals. So, so I think the one thing that hunters... Listen, we're not giving you a lot of great news here, obviously, and yeah. we'd love to be telling you it's wet and we're making baby ducks like crazy, but it's just not where we are. I think the good news is is that we know that the production of young on the prairies really drives harvest in lots of places, right? Exactly. But we also need to remember things like weather, things like precipitation, can have a huge influence on what you see over your decoys, right? Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. so right. the notion that this is a throwaway duck season just yeah. isn't the no. case. There's going to yeah. be plenty of duck hunting yeah. opportunities yeah. up there. Is It's going to be a little little tougher because we got a bunch of smart old ducks? Sure yeah. it is. But yeah. I think people are still going to go out and have great seasons. Oh, I'm super excited. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's the duck season. Yeah, we live for this stuff. And and like you say, you know, weather drives half of what we do anyway so so we could get good we could get bad so and you know one of the things about drought is that next year it could be better because all the seasonals and temporary ponds were dry and grew a great crop of vegetation so if we get wet this winter like it's normal you know we'll have incredible production next year yeah, so but certainly hope so overall john i think it looks like uh production is poor we have drought uniform across the prairies prairie canada U.S. Um, but duck numbers are still pretty high, so we expect a, a you know a reasonable fall flight. Won't have those young birds. Atlantic Flyway will do better. They've had better conditions. Pacific Flyway might do a little worse because they've had such dry and extreme conditions. But overall, you know, not that bad. We've seen worse. Duck We've seasons. seen worse. Right. That's yeah, for sure. sure. Yeah. And yeah. you know. Guys got to get out there and enjoy it and take advantage yeah. of the opportunities that are out there. There's certainly going to be opportunities. Right. Get out there and enjoy the season. Right.